Hi, you've reached Julie Roca with Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca podcast. How many times have you found a great tool that just makes your life easier? Well, as we age and as we are living that senior life, there are a lot of tools that are out there that we can utilize. We call them durable medical equipment, Um, hospital beds, wheelchairs, scooters, all kinds of really great tools that we have these days that can help to make life so much easier. The questions we get all the time are, how do I get them and how do I pay for them? They're kind of expensive. So today I have as my guest Rob Stoneberger with Inhabit Home Health and Hospice because my friend Rob has a lot of experience in durable medical equipment. Way back in the day when you were a teenager like me, I mean, I cut my teeth on on seniors and senior living, you were cutting your teeth, so to speak, on durable medical equipment. Tell me a little bit about that. So yeah, at a young age, my my aunt actually brought me in as her, you know, little protege. did billing first, which was actually incredibly helpful. Wow, um, yeah. So did a lot of billing for about 10 years, but then she changed roles into a durable medical equipment company and did just billing for them, and I was able to get my feet wet in medical equipment and oxygen and power mobility primarily. Um, and then later in life, it went to oxygen services and companies like that, so it just snowballed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's real life-saving equipment right there. Yeah. So that's big deal stuff. Yeah. So, you know, the I get a lot of questions. Um, how do we know what we need? and Where do we go? How do we start? So can we, can we answer some of those questions today? Absolutely. I think we find a lot of different scenarios depending on diagnoses and situation. Mm-hmm. You know, we could have a loved one that's, you know, young or elder, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. And they're going to need a service down the road. Um, typically, pieces of equipment are going to be initiated from a specialty physician, okay. a primary care physician, okay. um, maybe a, a discharge out of a hospital or skilled nursing um, or ALF setting. Okay. You know, you got discharge planners that get those things set up upon mm-hmm. discharge. So you got a few angles and the, there also are mobile providers that are able to help okay. order types of equipment. So if I'm a family member and I am sitting in the hospital beside my loved one, and my loved one has had maybe some falls and they've had some struggles. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, this hospital bed has been really convenient. I think I could benefit from having this in the home to care for my loved one. What are the steps? Who should they ask first? Great question. So, again, initiate through a local provider. It's always great to be proactive you know, sometimes we can't help a reactive situation, right. but if you can try to be proactive um, and not wait until it's too late, you can reach out to your provider or specialty person. Uh, they can order this equipment, and it does take a proper order, proper verbiage, um, so please yeah. feel free to reach out anytime. Um, and that's kind of what I'd like to do for the community is give them the information they need, not to tell them what to say, but what guidelines and criteria for coverage through your insurance so that you can get that. So initiate yeah. with a doctor, and if you see that need, be proactive. And if you need to be reactive, again, just follow up with your following physician. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So if I – I recently went to a museum kind of a situation in St. Augustine, and you see where they had – really rough beds and, you know, they're, they're straw ticking and all of that and um, really uncomfortable. Re- it must have been very hard for people to give care back then. Mm-hmm. So I will talk to people that are still dealing with um, trying to work with their loved one in a twin bed uh, that has very little support and it's hard to get them in and out of. Um, they may be trying to work with a walker as they try to go shopping with them in the store. And a wheelchair is probably more of the speed that they need to be in because now they're having to have mom sit in the walker and trying to push her yes. walker, yes. which is a horrible thing. Yes. So 
Are there any kind of things that we can look for that we can start to say, hey, we might be getting close. We want to be proactive, not reactive. Could we start to see some signs and symptoms that it might be important to start having the conversation with the physician? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, every disease is different, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about like abnormality of gait or unsteady or tripping or preventative falls, Um, you know, grabbing on to things to steady themselves, just weakness in general. Um, It's a great tie for what we do um, in home health care. Right. You know, we can get in there and do the physical part to get them strong. But when you're looking at the equipment side of things, when you see any of those signs, um, another one is like needing help to get to a doctor's office, Mm -hmm. right? And having to need that. Right. You can reach out uh, to a medical equipment company, which if you go on your insurance policy, you call that policy, they'll give you your local (gasps) in-network providers. Well, that is absolute gold right there. Okay. Right? So call your insurance, get those providers. You can reach out to them. And some of those facilities and and DME companies will have – um, a showcase, like a, a floor, mm-hmm. or a specialist there that you can talk to you to go over what specific equipment fits best for your need. And you really do need to be careful which product you choose. Um, okay. okay. If you're going through insurance and you're going through a physician to get a, a service rendered or a piece of equipment, mm-hmm. most of the time, if it's going to be a purchase like a walker or a wheelchair, um, those things you get one chance out of five years. So if, okay. you, if you're going in and you you say, you know, mom would benefit from a wheelchair, but she also needs like a transport chair, something really lightweight, insurance is always going to go for the less expensive, less expensive okay. item. Uh, yes, of course. And then you're handcuffed. I say handcuffed, but for five years before you can get another product, unless mm-hmm. you have a catastrophic diagnosis change that justifies the need for okay. that similar item. And that's the key right there yeah. is taking advantage of those catastrophic changes. Right. And I think people don't realize how much uh, they can change when they have those those incidents. Right. And they're not fun. Uh, no, no one wants to have a fall. No one wants to have a hospital stay and a, and a stay in a rehab. But when you do, that is the time to take a look to see if there are any changes that you need to make to improve your life or the life of your loved one at that point because you can ask for more. Absolutely. Yeah. Things can change. You know, you get that walker that worked at that time and then you're an amputee. Oh, you're yeah. You're going to need something different, whether it be power mobility or, or whatever in conjunction with therapies given for strengthening. So um, no doubt about it, when there's a diagnosis change, mm-hmm. reach out to your caregivers and professionals to see if there's something that can help you with your quality of life for sure. And I don't know, you may not know this off the top of your head because you're not an insurance expert, but is there a window of time that you need to ask about that? Like you've got two weeks or 30 days. Do you know? I do. Um, So basically how it's going to work, any diagnosis that's labeled that you Mm -hmm. have, you're good to go moving forward when you need something. So you can go to that provider at any time to say, hey, you know, I have COPD. I need oxygen services. As long as you have a visit with the physician, whether it be telehealth, you know, um, certain diagnoses may require a physical visit initially. Mm -hmm. um, But as long as you prompt a visit that has notes going over the need, Mm -hmm. going over the item that you want, whether it be a piece of equipment or a therapy, you need to have that specified, you know, in that visit. And then the companies that you're going to for the service can take that visit to utilize for billing purposes to cover your items or services. Yes. And uh, that brings up another thing. A lot of times people will say, okay, I'm getting this medical equipment. I, I worked with a client recently that said, okay, we've ordered our uncle a bed. He isn't going to know how to work with it. Um, He had gone into – he had had some mild cognitive impairment, so Mm -hmm. maybe needed some training. That is where you work in conjunction with an inhabit home health company or with a home health company that is providing services in your area. Absolutely. Um, You can at that point, because it is a change, you can ask 
your physician or discharge social worker or whatever, you can ask at that point for some visits to yes. work through uh, learning how to operate that durable medical equipment, even walkers. Yes. For some people, learning to walk with a walker, it's a, it's a different dynamic. You and I are used to being upright and kind of just getting up and walking off. Right. You got to learn how to walk with a walker. It's a different way of walking. A different doorways, gate. steps. Doorways, steps. Yep. Yes, yep. all of that. So, yeah, that's great. So those, uh, the home health aspect works hand in hand. Yes. With your durable medical. Which equipment. is a great point. So upon your visit, loved ones that are seeing the need, if you depend on your significant other or friend or family to relay that, be that healthcare advocate for you due to disability or whatever mm -hmm. it is. If you, other than like a CPAP or BiPAP for sleep apnea, different conversation for a different day, but we can, I can help with billing and qualifications for that as well. But outside of that, almost every other piece of equipment is a taxing effort. Mm -hmm. Oxygen, walkers, yes. wheelchairs, commode, power chairs, hospital beds. Those you're typically a taxing effort. If if it takes an assisted device or a loved one to get you to the physician's office or you're going there to order that device, mm -hmm. please mention if it's necessary or you feel it would be helpful, home health care for physical therapy, yes. occupational therapy for strengthening. You don't – and again, this is lightly speaking. The DME can be a Band-Aid diagnosis situational, mm -hmm. right? Let's get them the strengthening they need. Yeah, we can get you that in the meantime, but let's get down to the root of the problem. Yes. And I think right? a lot of people are not aware that that is available and it's out there for them. Yeah. It's definitely covered under Medicare. Yes. Uh, and I, I don't want to get too much in the weeds with the insurance, but we are in that election period right now. Yes. Um, from October 15th to I think it's the first week in November, where people that have had Advantage plans because they've been pretty healthy right. are allowed to look and say, mm, my health has changed a little bit yes. and I need to go back and revisit uh, yes. what needs that I may be needing in the future. And one of the things that um, I knew about when I worked in home health and even in hospice was that those Advantage plans are very limited in what they'll cover. So if you're getting to a place where you need to talk about that durable medical equipment option and uh, talk about having more in-home health um, strength building and your, you've got your physical therapy that's covered, you've got your occupational therapy that's covered, you've got your speech therapy, and even um, you can get some skilled nursing home in yes. the home with that Medicare coverage. Yes. How about the Advantage plans? What have you seen these yes. days? Are the Advantage plans so much covering a lot of that right. or is this the time to make that switch. That's a great great way to say this. And, and again, no insurance-driven message. No, no, I not think at all. that for an Advantage plan, there is a right population. Yes. If you are not a taxing effort. I love that if, category. If yeah. you don't, if you mm -hmm. don't require assistance to get to and from, if you are very independent, an Advantage plan may be perfect for you. And really healthy. I mean, that's, right. the, that's the key. If you're really healthy, an Advantage plan can save you money. And, and it's I a mean, great setup. Yeah. For the elder patient or the patient that needs mm -hmm. more assistance, not even elder, let's just say taxing effort. Yeah. And requires yeah. that additional help to get to and from somewhere. It's not as easy. Um, I think that that's where we need to start looking at whether it be a Medicare policy or mm -hmm. another different type of policy. Medicare, we bill under Part A. It's 100 percent covered for therapy. It so it's a, it's a beautiful thing when you require that much service at home. Um, it's a great thing. But you can also have, you know, Blue Cross and Blue Shield be injured where you cannot go to work temporarily – Mm -hmm. have that insurance coverage, you're going to have a slight copay just like you would outpatient. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're independent, you can go back to work and we can back out. As and that's company, that's so. what you and I would use because right. we are not 65 yet. Right. So we don't we're not covered by Medicare. Yes. Um, but I think thank you for for 
uh, participating in that conversation because right mm-hmm. now that conversation is critical as it people is. are looking at what are gonna, my needs going to be over the next year. Yes. Um, and I just want to let the audience know I am not an expert in this. Rob is not an expert in this. But you can go and um, look at our elder options uh, here locally in Alachua. Every state has the ability. Every state has a senior uh, senior help line, yeah. so to speak, that you can look into making these changes. And I think as healthcare workers, we're very concerned um, when people can't get coverage. So um, so total segue off of where we were. But um, it's a great conversation to have. There's companies like Shine that don't have a foot in the race mm-hmm. that a patient can go to to get guidance on what policies they have now. Yes what's covered by those policies and then compared to what you may need. It's a great resource so you don't feel swayed by an insurance. Yes. I love I yeah. love the Shine program that we have. So yeah. now is definitely the time to sit and reflect and maybe chat with your physician. Yeah. Um, give Shine a call. And uh, yeah. we've got, got that little window. Yes. But as you also mentioned, um, if you have a, a, a life change – uh, you can also that does kind of open up the options yes. for more change too. Yes. But anyways, as uh, do you have any? Do, I love stories. Do you have yeah. any stories about? Got some great me? some great ones. Uh, doing this since I was fifteen, I'm I'm far past that now. So I've had a <laughs> lot of stories. Uh, look forward to many 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 more coming up. Um, you know they're not all good, but man, there's some really great ones out there. So uh, alternating pressure pad situation. We've got a patient that doesn't quite have a, a bed sore yet, you know, mm-hmm. and this is situational. Everybody yeah. could, you could be in an ALF assisted living facility, maybe not have as much care as you want in that moment. Just mm-hmm. maybe you're out of state as a, as a uh, family member and you can't be there to, you know, position that patient yes. to Every give them what hours, they need. Right, yeah. So I had a patient's wife reach out once and say, you know, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we want. We want a hospital bed. We'd love to have what's called an alternating pressure pad that, you know, it circulates and moves around to give that those pressure yeah. points a break. And yes. it's really nice but extremely expensive. Yeah. So did they have insurance? Yes. Was it covered? Absolutely. The technicality is they insurance will not cover a mattress alternating pressure pad without an open decubitus. You have to have a wound in order to justify the need. Not, oh, not preventative. Man. It's situational. If they have it, it's to treat. Okay. So when that, let's say, patient had a wound mm-hmm. and insurance approved and they bring out the mattress, um, when it heals, the mattress goes away. Oh, wow. So you could okay. be back in the same boat, you know, situationally. So my advice to her was not well, – that's option A. You can do mm-hmm. this. Or option B, you can look online at any of the – you know, they've got all the marketplaces and things like that for people that sell items. I got a call back probably a month or two later from that person. God knows the time. I can't remember. But calls back and says, remember me, the situation. I go, yes. Yeah, right? It, it hit. Right, and, yeah. And uh, – she wanted to call to thank me so much. She reached out to the marketplace and was not only wow. now these mattresses are probably in the range of two thousand to, to four thousand. Like they're they're expensive mattresses. She was able to get the hospital bed, the mattress, and everything out the door from someone who had a loved one that had you know wow. recently used this for maybe two thousand two thousand dollars. So saved a lot of money. Yeah, has the pad now. In general, for preventative, for, for whatever. So these yeah. are the types of things that I think really help connect the dots. Just having someone like yourself and someone like me that loves the 411, loves our connections yes. and resources to give these guys ideas and angles outside of just our realm. Um, so That brings up another question that I've had before from several people. When a loved one no longer needs the equipment. Yes. Um, what do you do with it? Do you Great have question. to give it all back? Is there a way to recycle? Is there a way to find someone else who really needs great, the equipment? Great you question. From? So don't shoot the the messenger. I just know the mm-hmm. kind of the rules to the game and insurance and things like that for DME. Um, certain products are a rental, okay. and for example, a hospital bed through Medicare yes. is a rental for so long—twelve mm-hmm. months, 
until it converts to a purchase. If the patient has been alive and utilizing that equipment for 12 months, that specific product is there converts a... to a purchase. Okay. If they pass away in the middle of those 12 months, the patient does, the bed is picked up because it has not been completely paid out. Okay. So there, there's so technicalities, <laughs> right? Uh, commodes, they're probably not going to pick up. So hold on to those. But oxygen machines, um, those are forever rentals. So no one ever owns an oxygen machine. At some point mm -hmm. when someone goes, those come back. So depending on the item, depends right. on if it's yours or not. A hospital bed typically would go back, but they'd leave a mattress. So it's situational. Reach out to the company. Remember the company that has delivered your equipment. Okay. Write down their name. Keep track. You may only use them once in your lifetime for something. But when you need that service again or need something picked up, add it on. When you go back to your provider, not always do they have down who they sent that order to. So keep okay. track of who your company is. And now hospice does provide that under the Medicare Medicaid benefit. And they will come and pick it up as soon as Amen. the loved one is gone. Yes. Um, but I've had other people say, I don't know what to do. I have this wheelchair. And, you know, right. even in my neighborhood – uh, someone put a wheelchair out to the side of the road yes. and they were calling me saying, you need to go look at that because I'm sure you know somebody who needs it. Yes. And actually that particular wheelchair was so done, <laughs> it wasn't going to be worth it, it was for over. anybody. There, was, there were no more yeah. miles left for that one. Um, so that's great information. Don't just try to give it away. Um, I love the hospice angle. that picked up. Try to, try to reach out to a local hospice. If it's a nice piece of equipment that you just don't have the space or need for, they you could try a marketplace to get mm -hmm. rid of it if you wish. Some things like oxygen you can't sell online because Absolutely it's a not. prescription. Yeah. But certain items you can either try to sell and or donate to hospice. It's a great cause. They will take certain items for donation services. Okay. It's that's, really smart to say that as well. That's yeah. a great yeah. point. Well, Rob, thank you yeah. for coming on. This is I've learned a lot, and um, absolutely. And anybody that would like to talk with you more, yes, you are with Inhabit Home Health and Hospice. Yes, um, they can reach you by calling the Ocala office, absolutely, and um, have conversations with you if they have any questions for you. Absolutely, and thank you all, and good luck, and reach out anytime. And again, Julie's a great resource outside of. <laughs> Just her lane and my lane. So any get anything you guys need, please reach out. Yes, and if you have any questions for us, please comment in the comment section. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, um, like, subscribe, and this is meant as a tool. Please share with your friends and family. Thank you so like. much. Thank you, Julie.